What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the options that you have once you've created your model and you need to present it. So what you can do with your model once you've created it. Um, before I start, I do want to thank Tim O'Haran. Tim is my newest supporter on Patreon. Patreon, as most of you know, is a crowdfunding website where you can support creators that you like, so you can support this show. Um, if you do that, you get access to different rewards, like being able to vote on my extension of the week or um, being able to download all the models that I've used in my videos for the week that sort of thing so if you're interested in supporting the show make sure you check out that link in the notes below now let's go ahead and just jump into it so I really wanted to make a video just walking through some of the options that you have for what you can do with your model in order to present it so the example model that I used is just called house and it's by user Paul wall I've actually used it in a video before but I just kind of wanted to use it to show you some of the things that you can do with this so first thing you can do with the SketchUp model is you can you can just do a direct walkthrough or fly through video in your presentation. So you could walk in and you could just bring this model in here with you and you could use it in order to show different views and fly through in real time to answer questions and that sort of thing. Now I will say, having done some presentations in the past, if it's going to be any kind of a high pressure situation or anything like that, I would recommend setting up tabs with your various views and probably labeling them a little better than I've done here. But I would recommend setting up those scenes so all you have to do is click on those to get to the different views that you want. So you could set this scene up and you could call it kitchen. That would give you a view of what the kitchen would look like. So then you can easily fly through instead of trying to figure out where you want to put your camera or anything like that. Um, it really makes everything work a little bit easier in SketchUp. So the, the live version is definitely a way that you can do a presentation. The next thing you can do is you can also create an animation. So I've talked a little bit about this uh, in the past and I'm gonna try to link to some playlists of some YouTube videos where I show you how to create some of this stuff um, in the notes below. So make sure you go check that out. But um, you can set up different animations. So like for example, if you wanted to create a a, a video where you flew around this house what you would do is you'd set up a couple different scenes and then you'd export an animation and what that would do is that would export basically if I go to view animation and I click play then it would basically export this particular animation so you can see how what it's doing is it's just transitioning between the scenes that I've selected and you can see how I turned all of these other scenes off if they're in parentheses then they're not included in the actual animation so if you look down in your scene section of your tray you can check that box to turn those on and off and then all you do is well first of all you can go to your view animation settings and you can adjust the length of time between your transitions as well as how long each transition takes so if you wanted that video to be a little bit uh, a little bit slower you know more of a slow orbit around this building you could also get rid of the scene delay so that it just continually flew around this building but then all you'd have to do is you just go to file export animation and you can click video and what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to export a video and I do know that you can't export any kind of uh, high definition stuff in the free version of SketchUp you need uh, to use the pro version in order to do that but I believe you can still export like a 480p video or something like that I think you can set all the frame rates and everything in the free version but you can adjust all of these different things to make it smoother so you can tell it to use more frames or less frames um, kinda whatever you want and then once you do that all you have to do is just click export and what it'll do is it'll come in here and it'll export all of those different frames so you can see how this is going and what it's doing is it's exporting each frame as an individual image and since I selected mp4 what it's gonna do is it's gonna stitch all of this together into a single video so um, it's just gonna go through it's gonna export this animation and then you have something you can open up in like a uh, Windows Media Player or whatever so and this will be pretty low resolution because I selected that 480p just so it would export um, really quickly so this isn't gonna be a super high resolution image but this is great if uh, you have some kind of presentation where you're a little concerned that your model might crash or you don't have a fast computer if you're just trying to show something in the background then you can use this you could set it to like loop um, that sort of thing so you can export an animation 
out of your SketchUp model. So the next thing you could do is you could just directly export an image. So if you just have something in here, I think a lot of woodworkers and people like that just directly export their image or print it. And you can definitely do that. It's probably not the best way to get images out of your model, um, especially because when you export images in SketchUp, it doesn't necessarily export the line weight very well um, or the lines very well. But what you can do is you can just go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and you can set your file name and you can set your, um, your view size and I do believe that anything that you export in the free version is going to be lower resolution. So I think the free version is kind of limited in the way that it exports and I don't know if the pro version does too much better. Generally speaking what you do in the pro version is you actually export it. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. So. Um, in the pro version, it's probably a little bit better to send it to layout, but you can definitely either directly export your images or you can use something like the snipping tool to copy paste. So if you just had a view in here and you just wanted to throw it in a presentation real quick, you could select this and save it or copy it or do whatever you wanted to with it. So you can just directly take images out of SketchUp. Um, the next thing you can do is if you want to get a little more in depth, you can export these to layout. And so Layout is SketchUp's construction document creation software. Um, it's something that's only contained in the pro paid version of SketchUp, but you can use that in order to create things like floor plans and construction documents and that sort of thing. Well, you can also use it to create images and uh, like different sheets and that sort of thing for, uh, for your presentation. So you can use it to get multiple views on your sheet and I can adjust these views too like for example if I wanted to I could just bring in my first scene you know you can bring in different scenes and different views based on what you want in layout so you could create something with a whole bunch of different images and that sort of thing so one, one of the things that's tricky about exporting SketchUp models is when you export an image out of SketchUp it doesn't necessarily bring in the line weights very well so like for example, if I pull up this image that I exported, what this didn't do, if you kind of zoom in, is it doesn't export the lines in a way that looks very good. So you can see how these are kind of pixelated and you can see how they're not smooth lines. Well, what layout allows you to do is it allows you to adjust the way that those line weights look. So if you go down and you look at this little drop down, you have three options, right? You have vector, you have raster, and you have hybrid. So a vector image is an image where your line weights, where your line weights come in really smooth. Like you can see how when I switch that to a vector image, the lines are really smooth, but it can't render the the styles very well. So you saw how um, how when I switch between vector and raster, it pops up this image that says it can't represent con complex styles. So what that means is you can see how these lines are really smooth, but it's not showing any of your textures or anything like that. Well, what you can do is you can select this hybrid version, and what this does is it renders your lines as a vector, but your styles as a raster. And so you get kind of the best of both worlds, but what it does is it takes longer to render because it has to render both the um, textures and the style stuff as well as your lines but if you select that you click OK and you let it render that you can see how my lines are really smooth while I still get my um, while I still get my texture styles in here so that's definitely a good way to represent things in your model that's something that's only found in layout so sometimes you don't necessarily want this you you want to be kind of artistic with these like sometimes you want to come in here and uh, you know make this look a little bit more like hand-drawn or you want to adjust your uh, line weights or that sort of thing well what you can do is you can come down to the styles section of your tray and there's a whole bunch of different styles in here that adjust the way that your model looks so like for example I came in here and I basically told this there's a style in here for brush strokes on canvas and so what it does is it adjusts the way that your line weights look and also kind of makes your uh, textures look a little bit more like brush strokes so you can use these different styles to achieve different looks so there's a whole bunch of different built-in like assorted styles and you can see how I can make this kind of look hand-drawn I can also use this to uh, export different uh, 
like line weights, that sort of thing. So I can use lighter line weights, I can use heavier line weights, and you can export those you can export those as layers and use them in something like Photoshop or you can use this to achieve a look that you want. So like in the past, you know, you can you can make this look more kind of hand drawn. And then you can customize all of these as well. So like for example, there's this uh there's this kind of hand drawn pencil drawn paper style in here where you can make this hand drawn but you can also come in here and adjust it so that your materials show and that sort of thing so this is just a really good way to create kind of a different look really quickly and easily in your models and you can save those as your scenes up above just like you can anything else so if I wanted to add a scene for this I could just click add scene and then I would just label that scene pencil drawing And that way I could have my working views up here, but then I can also transition back to that pencil drawing style really quickly. So you can use this to create different looks in your model um, directly out of the geometry that you've already created. So photorealistic renderings is another way that you can do this. A lot of people like to take their models and apply light to them and make them look photo real. So um, I'm not gonna get too far into this other than a link to my rendering uh, playlist in the notes below. But um, just some of the things you can do is you can do things like um, apply light to things like glass and you can see how things uh, kind of reflect and look more realistic. So these are all, these are all things that I've rendered um, in some of my tutorial videos. So you can do things like having an exterior and then glass and um, different models and different materials and that sort of thing. And there's a lot of different programs that you can use to do this. So everything I've done is in Twilight Render, but um, probably V-Ray is the industry leader. There's a lot of different programs out there that you can use to do this. The, the downside to this is these are all pretty time consuming. So what this does is this basically applies light to your materials and then um, it basically uses math to figure out how those materials would respond in order to make them look photo real. Well, the problem with that is it takes a long time to do that. So the upside is you can create some really amazing images and um, the downside is that it can take a lot of time and take a lot of expertise. And I will say that I am nowhere near an expert in rendering, but uh, there's definitely a lot of people out there that are very, very, very good at that that can make things just look completely real. So number seven, is real-time rendering so a new thing that's starting to occur is uh, there's there's programs out there now called real-time rendering programs um, they're programs like Inkscape or Lumion where you can actually create real-time walkthroughs so they're basically like video game engines for your uh, models so you can basically just walk around in your model and it'll just do the photorealistic rendering as you walk so these are getting more and more popular and the reason is they're very easy to use you just kinda of hit play and you go and I've used a couple of them in the past I'd say Lumion and Inkscape are a couple of the big ones um, the downside to these is they do get a little bit expensive but they're very easy to use so if you're like a design shop or that sort of thing and you're gonna be doing a lot of this stuff it may be worth the investment so so another area that I don't have a ton of experience, but a lot of artists can create amazing visuals is using Photoshop. So you export things out of your SketchUp model into Photoshop with different layers in order to create new images and scenes. So, and Jim Leggett is probably the biggest name in doing this. There's some others as well, but um, he's very good at using SketchUp models and Photoshop to create amazing images and so what he does and this is an article on sketchuparist.org there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different tutorials and that sort of thing on that website for how to do this but basically what he does is he models everything and then he exports it with different line weights and different options and then he layers them together in Photoshop so you can see how he took different line weights and merged them together and then he also exports things that shows like the textures and all of that and then he combines them together so he kind of filters the different layers in order to create different views 
So, and then if you look at kind of the final, final version, he can create amazing new different kinds of views by layering this stuff properly. So another example also from SketchUp artists is this more like modern office building look where he took, yeah, so he took a SketchUp model and then exported it to Photoshop and he layered different light pieces on top of it. And this gets really in depth with the way that he does it. And uh, I'll try to link to this in the notes down below, but you can see how he creates all these different layers, all this different lighting in order to create this final image. So if you can figure out how to use SketchUp and Photoshop together, you can create really cool visuals. And one place to go to start is actually, I believe Anita Brown has some uh, really good, they're paid courses, but they're courses where she teaches you to use things like Photoshop and SketchUp together in order to create different views. So she's got thing where she things where she teaches you to uh, use either Photoshop or GIMP, which is like a free version of Photoshop, in order to create different views of things like floor plans and that sort of thing. So that's probably a good course for you to check out in order to figure out how to do these different things, get kind of an introduction to the combination of Photoshop and SketchUp. So, and then something I've been playing around with lately, it's kind of a new thing. I haven't been able to do a ton with it, but there's an extension called SketchFX. It's a paid extension, but basically what it does is it allows you to, what it does is it'll take different styles and allow you to layer them together. So to create new views like in SketchUp. So you can see how like, for example, basically what this'll do is it'll this'll mask different styles across across my model. So it's combining two different styles to create new kinds of visuals. So, and I'll link to that in the notes below. You can download the free trial at the sketchupessentials.com slash sketchfx. Um, I am an affiliate for that software, but it's something that I'm just kind of messing around with, just kind of seeing what I can do. Because uh, being able to do all of this stuff inside your model is really powerful. I will say that it can be a little bit slow in order to do because it's basically rendering your model as you go. So it's probably more similar to a photorealistic rendering software than um, anything else. But you can see how you can create new views with transparencies, that sort of thing. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Uh, did you feel like I left something out or that I should have covered something more in depth? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.